So I've been playing a lot more indie video games lately. And as a result of this hobby of mine, I've been getting really into PSX graphics. It seems to be a popular trend that indie games are adopting a PSX graphical style or some sort of variation of it, and it fucking hits hard. For those who don't know, PSX is just a graphical style based off of the PS1. It's blocky, it's low resolution, it's pixelated. Due to hardware limitations on the early consoles, game devs were very restricted on their artistic approach. But with limitations comes creativity, and a bunch of nerds figured out how to turn those limitations into art. Now, this art style isn't for everyone, but as a 30-year-old man-child, I can definitely appreciate it. And with its growing popularity, it's no secret that this approach to video game graphics just resonates with a lot of people as well. Now, this graphical art style is relatively easy to achieve. Of course, there's always going to be artists out there who can turn literal shit into gold. But the main point being, you don't need five years of Blender experience and to be a cracked video game artist to be able to produce good results using this method. The only skills that you need are as follows. Number one, basic modeling skills. Can you place a block? Can you resize a block? Can you move it? Can you extrude it? Great, you have all the modeling skills that you need. Number two is UV unwrapping. Now, I know a lot of people sort of struggle with UV unwrapping when they first start out, but trust me, UV unwrapping this stuff is so easy. Lastly, number three is basic Photoshop skills. If you've spent more than five minutes in Photoshop, then let's be honest, you're more than overqualified. I struggle to change my brush sizes in Photoshop, so if I can do it, so can you. And that's it. That's all you need to get started in making PSX graphics for your video games. Of course, there are some technical and engine side skills that you could use to really elevate your PSX graphics. I personally can't write a shader to save my life and I've only just started learning particle effects. Before we get into it, I'll be using Blender and Photoshop, but this workflow is transferable over to any other 3D software and any other image editing software such as GIMP. But this intro is probably overextending, so let's get into it. Modeling low poly assets. The secret to modeling good PSX graphics is to keep it low poly. Block out the most basic form of whatever you're trying to create and that's it. Modeling a chair, give it four legs, a seat and a backrest. Nothing fancy, no bevels, no curved surfaces, just cubes and skinny long cubes. Want to model a TV? Bring in a box, and if you want to get fancy with it, inset this back face here by pressing I in edit mode and extrude this face out by pressing E, scale down the end of the face with S, and bam, you've got a TV. Let's throw in a coffee table, an ashtray, and a cigarette with a lighter. Now, this took me all of 10 minutes, and we already have the lounge room of a middle-aged man who's just been recently divorced. Keep it simple, keep it low poly, don't overthink it. Step number two is sourcing our images. Once we've modeled our assets, it's time to jump on the internet and try and find some images. Now, one thing that stands out to me a lot with PSX graphics is they're used for real world photos. Take any photo, scale down the resolution, and with a little bit of tweaking, you can achieve that PSX look quite easily. There are many different ways that you can do this. I tend to use textures.com and Pinterest quite a lot, but you can literally use anything. You can go to furniture websites, you can go to eBay, you can scour Google images. If it has pictures and a search bar, it's literally a texture website. Now, if you're building textures for, let's say a commercial game, obviously copyright laws and such exist. So just be careful, use the appropriate avenues to source your textures. But another thing that you can do is you could just take your phone, take photos of random things around the house, around your neighborhood, literally anything and if you've got a camera you've got a free infinite source of legal textures to use at your disposal for the sake of this video i'll be using pinterest i'll look for something that has a bit of potential and if i click it pinterest does a pretty good job at finding related images so that's the site that i normally use the most i'll copy a snippet of an image that i really like and bring that straight into photoshop step number three is photoshop now ps1 games use between 128 and 512 resolution textures most commonly relying on about 256. Now, because we don't have those hardware limitations, this now comes down to a bit of an artistic choice. I'll be creating a 256 by 256 canvas and pasting our image from Pinterest straight into there. First thing you wanna do is scale down the image to fit the canvas. So pressing Control T, this will allow you to resize. You can hold Control, Shift or Alt while resizing it to use different sizing options. I'm just going to resize it normally until it fills the entire canvas and we can prevent any stretching or warping. 
With that done, you can hit Control U to adjust any hue and saturation if you want. Now, maybe you want these textures to be seamless, so you don't want to see that tiling line. Simply go to View and turn on Pattern Preview. This will tile your canvas, and if you enable the Clone Stamp tool, resize it to something like 30, hold Alt and select a part of your image that you want to clone. You can then draw that area on different sections of your canvas. You will see as I'm drawing around that the little crosshair will follow the mouse movements from a set distance and it'll sample that section to draw over your cursor. With this in mind, we can take a sample from other parts of our image and draw them over the seams. Sometimes recloning multiple times helps to break it up just a little bit. It might take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but it's super easy once you get your head around it. Now that we've removed the seams, we can blur any hard edge with the blur tool and we can start to dither our colors. Dithering is a popular technique used in PSX graphics and it just really helps give us that classic look. So head over to image, mode and index colors, copy these settings here and adjust the color samples to something that you like. Between 32 and 124 is usually a good starting point but experiment around with it, see what you like. I believe the PS1 used between 16 and 32 samples. I could be wrong. I'll leave a link to some really good articles that cover these things about PS1 graphics in the description. Before moving over to Blender, if you're working with an image and you want to remove, let's say, a sticker or a phone number, the clone stamp tool will be your go-to method. Take a sample from a part of an image that matches what you're trying to cover, brush over it, blur it if needed, and it's all fixed. UV unwrapping and applying textures. Now, this is the part that a lot of people love to hate, but when working with PSX graphics, UV unwrapping is probably the most satisfying part of this whole process. Once you've exported your image from Photoshop, you can select the object you wish to apply that image to, create a new material, and simply drag and drop your image into the shader tab. Don't forget to join all your geometry into a single object by selecting all the parts and hitting Control J. Connect your image texture to the principal BSDF, crank that roughness right up and head over to the UV editing tab. From here, you wanna make sure that your object is selected, apply rotation and scale, go into edit mode, hit U and smart UV project. Set your island margin to roughly around 0.3. This will just leave a bit of spacing in between your UV islands so you can move those UVs into position. In the UV editing tab, press three on your keyboard to get the face select mode. And if your UVs are still stuck to one another, select the UV island and hit Y. This will detach it so you can move it freely. Scale your islands up or down with S, rotate them with R, move them with G. You can scale your UVs to be larger than the image, but if your textures aren't seamless, you'll start to see some lines and stuff like that throughout your textures. Once you've UV unwrapped your assets and moved them around, all that's left to do is export your assets as either an FBX if you're working with Unity or Unreal, or a GLTF if you're working with Godot. Make sure that your materials are packed inside the file and all you need to do is drag and drop them into your game engine. Honestly, it's really that easy. Another classic move for PSX graphics are creating trees like this. Take a cylinder, give it about five to six edges and add two planes as such. Find an image of a tree, remove the background with the magic wand in Photoshop, use the clone stamp tool to cover any parts that the magic wand may have missed, export it as a PNG without a background, add a material to your planes, drag the image in, connect the color to the color, the alpha to the alpha, and you have tree leaves. Remember to set the interpolation the closest for that pixelated look. Repeat the previous steps we did for the coffee table with some tree bark that you found online, and now you have one of the most basic but coolest looking trees in all of gaming. You can reuse these image textures to other assets that you've made, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk about optimization. If you're trying to achieve seamless textures for say terrain, trees, large walls and so on, go ahead, put it on its own texture sheet. But something that we can do to optimize our textures is to create like a texture atlas. Basically, you can just add a bunch of different textures to a single texture sheet and share those across multiple assets. Or you could also break down more complex textures such as this gas pump that I've created. You can UV unwrap your models onto that and just place the UV islands into the appropriate places. You don't always need a single texture sheet dedicated to one single texture. Sometimes you can just scale up your resolution to 512 by 512 and add just a bunch of different textures on there as well. In saying that, we're working with pretty low resolution textures. It's not going to be that demanding, but it is always a good habit to try and optimize and be efficient where you can. But yeah, this has been another tutorial. I hope you've learned something cool. I've almost hit 700 subscribers. That's fucking crazy. The fact that nearly 700 people are listening to what I say blows my fucking mind. But in celebration, I've opened up a Discord server. So come through, show off what you're working on, ask for help, share funny game dev memes, yada yada. Maybe I'll include them in my next video or something. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye.